I know it might sound ironic, but as when me and Kay come into the business school, like there's loads of rooms. Like, and I remember, I remember when I was growing up, I used to watch Monsters Inc. And if you go through the wrong door, it can be a problem. So, okay, just want to make sure I'm in the right room. So, quick show of hands. Who has, who likes the idea of becoming their own boss? Raise your hand. Thank you. And who likes the idea, or who currently has a business, or likes the idea of having a business at some point in the future? Raise your hand. And say, I am. Uh, is, that, is that energy? <laughs> Final question. And what, who would like the idea of this business impacting the lives of millions of people and then getting paid very handsomely in the process? Raise your hand and say, I. Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm guessing then that you're probably here for one of three reasons. Maybe you're here because you understand that as a university graduate, when you do graduate, at the end of the day, you're just going to get a certificate with your name and a degree classification on it. Or perhaps you're here because you understand that, right, I might be able to get that job afterwards, but you don't want to be subjugated to the fate of many other graduates having to, you know, subject to that 40-40 plan, having to work for 40 years of your life, working 40 hours a week, to retire at the age of 70, and then work for a few more years retiring and dying. Maybe you're here for that reason. Or maybe you're here for the final reason. Maybe you look outside and have friends, or maybe people you don't know, people your age or even younger than you, absolutely killing it in some kind of business, and you think, wow, I can do that too. So maybe you're here for maybe positive reasons. Maybe here you want to set up a business that makes loads of money. Maybe you think, wow. What, Ring Rovers on sale now, yeah. They'll go nice with my with the Lamborghini and the Ferrari I've got. Or perhaps you would like the idea of having more time. Time to do what you want, with who you want, whenever you want. Mum, what are you doing, what are you doing Monday at nine? But, but Coyote, that's Monday morning at nine o'clock, most people at work. Now I can't what you're doing, I'm taking you for a massage. Maybe you'd like to have something like that in your future. Or just maybe you like the concept of just helping as many people as possible. Being able to reach millions of lives, someone to look you in the eye and say, I'm here because of you. I'm not going to give up because of you, you changed my life. So it's fair to say, ladies and gentlemen, that for whatever is keeping you on this side of the room, is it fair to say that you must have some kind of concept or kind of strategy that is keeping you over here? Raise your hand and say yes if you agree with me. Who agrees with that? Yes. yes. Thank you. So then does it also make sense to you that for you to get from where you are here to get to the other side, does it also make sense to you that you need to adopt some kind of new strategy or change what you're currently doing to get over there? Raise your hand and say yes if you agree with that too. Yes. yes. And that's exactly why I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to teach today and try to show you how you can move from this side to that side. The question we need to ask ourselves is that if we recognise within ourselves that we're not currently happy with our current situation and we want to move to our future destination, the question we need to ask ourselves is how? How do we move from what we're currently doing to get to where it is we want to be? And that's exactly why I'm here today to show you exactly how you can do that. So what is a vehicle? Like we discussed this, can that be some kind of vehicle or so some kind of process which is going to move you? And I'm not asking this question, but I know you all already know the answer why you wouldn't be standing in this room. What's going to take you from where you currently are to where you want to be? And the answer is business. It's business. Let me tell you why I think that's important. When I graduated in 2013 as a sports psychologist, there was probably another 100 people in my classroom exact same degree classification. And that's just at MMU. So what about for the rest of the UK? How many other sports psychologists graduated in 2013? What about the year before that? Or what about the year before that? If you study media, how many people do you think are graduating in media every year? Probably thousands. So what you've got to ask yourself is that if someone's hiring, why would they hire you? 
In no disrespect, for, wait, why would they hire you? There's thousands of people who are all doing the same thing as you, so why would they hire you? If you're not already, I mean, you're all current students, if you're not already volunteering or getting experience in that field, when you graduate, why should they hire you? And I say that in the nicest way possible. I say that in the nicest way possible because for you to go from here to where you want to be over there, you need to have some kind of control in your life to do that. And the best way to get that control is just owning your own business. Just own it yourself. And right now is the perfect time for you to do that. And why do I say that? Because you're all still students. Some of the biggest companies out there in the world right now were started by students. Who's heard of a company called Facebook? Should I show of hands? Oh, we've heard of Facebook. I only heard about it yesterday, you know. No, I'm kidding. Facebook started in 2003 by Mark Zuckerberg when he was a student. Michael Dell, 1984, started Dell Computers when he was a student. My friend Billy Gates, Bilbo Gates, Bill Gates, Microsoft, he started it when he was a student. When he was at Harvard University. Right now is the perfect time for every single one of you to start yourself a business. What, what, what is important about being a student? Why is it the concept of student? There's three reasons why I like to say it's the perfect time for you to do it literally right now. Firstly, you have more time than everybody else. Like, I, I don't want to hear it when people say they don't have time to start a business as a student because at the end of the day, you're not having lectures from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Raise your hand if you're in lectures 9 to 5 Monday to Friday like a full-time job. I didn't think so. You're probably in lectures maybe four times a week, three times a week, and even then it's not like not necessarily whole days. You have more time than everybody else to start a business. So time isn't an excuse for people to start a business being a student, because you have an advantage over the people driving along this highway right now who are driving to work. Because it's subjugated to the fact that it needs to be at work nine to five, 40 hours a week. You don't have to do that yet. Another reason why it's an advantage for you to start a business right now is the network you have. I read a statistic that said that students are the most connected people in our society. And why is that? Well, firstly, you're the right age of the social media boom. So I'm sure all of you guys are on Facebook groups or you have WhatsApp groups or some kind of groups, whether it's going to the students' union, playing in your sports clubs or societies. You're, you're well connected with people of your peers. You know, I walked into this business with probably like 100 people I can probably network with and maybe do something with. You're more connected than the majority of people out there. And it's time to take it and use it to your advantage. But the most important reason why it's important for you to start a business right now while you're a student, is because you're young. If you're 18, raise your hand. Okay, I'm not 18, but... If you're 19, raise your hand. 20. 21. 22. 23. Am I getting too high now? 24. <laughs> Certain people don't want to raise their hand. 25. <coughs> raise your hand if you're 30. Not that if you're 31, raise your hand. If you're 32, get the hell out. You're too old. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But my point is that we're all young enough to start a business without having any dependencies on us. I doubt very much anyone in here has a mortgage. I doubt very much any of us has well, we might have a child, but I doubt many of us have a family dependent on us. We don't have, you don't have the same dependencies as people older than you. That's why it's perfect for you right now to think about doing it. Because when you graduate, when you're in the real world, you're even less likely to do it because you might have a child, you might have a mortgage, you might have a car finance you need to pay off. That's why right now is absolutely perfect for you. And I say that, could I say that you're young, but guess what? Do you stay young forever? Raise your hand if you stay young forever. You're taking some <laughs> potion in Harry Potter. You must be taking some next potion. But you're not going to stay young forever. And that's sad and it's great at the same time. The reason why it's sad is because you're running out of time. You're running out of time. I remember being 11. I remember being, I remember being, being 9. Soon most of you are 18, 19. You're going to be 25, 26, 26. You're going to be 30 soon. 
And really I say you're, you're wasting your time because as you're hearing me speak, as the words leave my mouth go through the air and hit your ears, there's somebody out there right now doing the exact same business that you would love to do. They have an idea that you haven't even thought about yet but you want to do and they're going to execute it and you're going to be absolutely pissed off that you never did it. One day you're going to be sitting at home, you know how you know what you do, you scroll on Facebook and then you're going to see like, fuck, that was my, I wanted to do that. And you're going to remember I said this to you today, you're going to remember I said this to you. I know if you don't come to the start, you're wasting your time. It reminds me of a story that, you know, I mean, I mean put it this way, if, if you haven't gone like that's fine, but at the end of the day, you, you all have gifts of some, of some sort. I don't care where, I don't need to know where it is. You, you, you don't even need to know where it is. If you don't understand right now what your gift is, that's fine. But I'm telling you that you do have some kind of gift. And I believe it's absolutely selfish. I believe it's absolutely selfish and, it, and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not fair for society for you to not to share it. How would we feel right now if Mark Zuckerberg got in a bad mood one day and was sitting in his dorm room and thought, you know what, fuck it, I ain't making Facebook, man. I can't even be bothered. No, I think no, no one's gonna want that. I can't be bothered. Who would be I don't know, I would be pissed if he never made it. Because my business is right on Facebook. You'd be absolutely pissed if he never did it. So you're doing the exact same thing. You have some, you have some kind of gifts that you that you are not sharing that someone is dependent on. There's maybe 10 year olds who, you, who when they grow up to be 18, they need the thing that you're considering. Don't just consider, just do it. It reminds me of the story, you know, you guys know a festival of a festive period for Christmas? You guys know Christmas? I don't want to make any assumptions, you know. I, I was watching American Pie and they said that, never assume, could you make an ass out of you and me? So I don't want to assume. So raise your hand if you've heard of Christmas before. Okay, just making sure. Imagine the story of, of, the, of the guy, uh, of a child, maybe five years old. You know how it is when you're young, excited for, yeah, let me run downstairs, open my presents, run downstairs, go to the tree, let's just pretend this is my tree, use your imagination, this is my tree, okay? Picks up a present, open the first one. Huh? This is the exact same present I got last year. Opens it, uh, puts it to the side. Open the next one. But this is the exact same one as last year too. Third one, same thing. Fourth one, he's a lucky kid, you know, five presents. Fifth one, exactly the same. Mom! What is it? Every single present you gave me is the exact same one you gave me last year. Why did, why did you give me the same gifts as you gave me the one last year? His mom just smiled and went, do you want to know why? Because you haven't used those gifts that I gave you last year. If you use the gifts I give you this year, you have more next year. However, if you share the gifts I give you this year, you have double the year after. <laughs> I made them sneeze. I say this because you guys all have gifts and it's up to you to share it. You have to share it. And now it's just like me back here before 2013, before I had any experience in business whatsoever. I had these ideas, I had these concepts and I thought, and I didn't, I didn't really know, I didn't really know what to do with them. But all I decided to do is take a, a bit of action. What's the word? Action. 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 Just a little bit of action. You know, before 2013, if you knew Coyote before 2013, you would have saw me just as a student, someone who's coming to the end of his degree, someone who realised that, right, you know, it's very, very unlikely, even though I've got first class honours, it's very, very unlikely I'll never become a sports psychologist because throughout my degree, I've never took advantage of doing any volunteering or anything whatsoever. If you saw me in 2013, you would have saw Coyote starting his role as vice president. You know, even when I was doing that, I always realised there's something more. I realised there's something, you know when you have that internal feeling that there's something more you can be doing? I know you probably all can relate. You know when you have that internal feeling that, you know, this isn't just for me. You know, I remember sitting in boardrooms and thinking, you know what I mean, lasts for like four or five hours, you have no idea what happened at the end of it. I always knew there was something more for me. And all I did is make a simple decision. Fast forward now to 2000, 2016 now, fast forward to 2016, I've been working for myself for the last two years. In fact, this is where the slide comes in, if it can't work. Which one should? Where's the blind? Yeah. Oops. 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 So fast forward to 2016, 
I've been working for myself for the last two years. I've been able to do some fantastic work with the BBC, getting featured to millions of people up and down the country, working with all different types of producers. I mean, it's absolutely surreal. You know, I've also been fortunate to travel the world to see some fantastic content. You know, driving fast cars and bikes in Miami, jumping out of planes in Sydney, taking selfies with Crocs in Florida, and can taking selfies with kangaroos in Australia. And I say this to you very humbly because if you knew me prior to 2013, you would have realised that. Like, I'm, if you know what average is, I was probably maybe a little bit below average. Because for me to get to university, I didn't. I had to go through a process called clearing because I failed college. So on paper, I'm not academically clever on paper. So I shouldn't have necessarily been at university in the first place if it wasn't for me ringing up m and begging them. I also know for a damn fact that every single one of you guys can do the same thing. All I decided to do is take a little bit of action. And over the last six months or so, people have been asking me, like, you know, what exactly, you always talk about having these frameworks. Remember I talked about the vehicle, the process, the system. You always talk about having these systems. You always talk about having these frameworks to get to where you was, to get to where you are. So I decided to conceptualize and I created this little program. I call it the Student Mastery Program. What this is, it's a five part program which helps people to get from just an undergraduate to absolutely bossing it. F, we see what I touched on finance. I'll go into it a bit further. <clears throat> L, this is, I'll call it becoming a living legend. Not necessarily physically, but in terms of your living. Aid, I call this aced academia. You know, I'm a kid who went from clearing to first class and getting published in the process doing that. How did I do that? I didn't even know how. I shouldn't have done that going through clearing. But the fact is that I did, and I'm realizing that, right, people asking me how to do it, I'm now sharing people how to do the exact same thing. Because I realized studying in academia, I've realized it's, it, I just saw it as a game. It's, it's literally just a game to do it. And I call this a mindset mastery. What about mastering your mindset? How are you going to master what goes on in the voice in between your two ears? And S is all about social. So I call it a student mastery program, FLAMS program. So I want to touch on this very briefly is the F because this is going to come into my example. So I call it the financial triangle, touching on part-time jobs, entrepreneurism, and a star money system. But since we're here for entrepreneurism, this is what I want to briefly touch on to give you guys a few tangible tips for you to take away with. So I call it the quick spin. So if you've got paper, you might want to write S-P-I-N on your left hand side. I call it the quick spin, just a quick introduction to in entrepreneurism, just very quickly. Does anybody need paper? You guys should come prepared, you know. Like, mm -hmm. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I was actually in lectures who would borrow paper, so it's okay. Who needs? Just write on the back of this, and you'll use the other side, like. So, I can see, so you might want to put the letters S P I N on one side of your paper. So I'll put it a quick spin cut. For, for, me, for me, when I first came into business, I found that some things were made, I'm sure Aaron and, and George can relate, something that's made so complicated for no reason. You know, something just over complicated. So I thought, right, what were the four basic things I did at the beginning, what I think can help you? The four basic things, they're not advanced, it's literally basic. First, you just become a social media machine. Become an absolute social media machine. I would not have got elected into an institution if I didn't become a social media machine. Oops. Again, you want to master your psychology. By trade, I'm a psychologist, so I'm always emphasizing the fact that you want to master your psychology. Idea generation and execution. and you want to have networking nuggets. Like, yeah. yeah. So quickly touching on, just like I said, I'm a psychologist by trace, that's my kind of favorite part. I just want to quickly touch on the psychology mastery. And I have a question for you guys. However old you said you are, by show of hands, in any 365 day period, have you ever had a complete year where you had complete good days every single day? 
Every single day of that, 365 days are absolutely bliss. Okay, second question. So as a student, in your degree, whenever you started your first year, have you had every single day, again, just complete bliss as well, just absolute uni's fun, every single day, never thought about quitting, ever, by show of hands? Okay, I didn't think so either. So when it comes to business, what do you think it's going to be like? Do you think it's going to be just smooth sailing the whole way? Or do you think there are going to be times we're going to have ups and downs? Show of hands if you think some hard times are coming ups and downs. Thank you. December 2014, I asked my mum to buy me some juggling balls. She said, she said Kai, why are you on juggling balls? I know you're a clown. I know I'm a clown, yeah, but she goes to me, why are you on juggling balls? I said, you know, I just fancy learning how to juggle. Is there anyone in here who can juggle? Okay, it looks like I've got to give a demonstration. It's going to be real bad if I mess up now, isn't it? So I asked my mum, can you buy me some juggling balls? And she said, why? I said, I just want to quickly learn. As I was learning how to juggle, I went from December 2014, not knowing how to juggle, I spent this day just learning how to juggle and managed to do it in a couple months later. But then, as I was learning to juggle, something became very, very apparent to me. Who can't juggle that doesn't mind coming up here to be my volunteer? Uh, yeah, of course, or sort of hands, or anyone, you want to bring that in first, mate? <laughs> uh, what's your name? Nash. Nash, ever give Nash a big hand? <laughs> so like I said, when I was learning how to juggle, something became very, very apparent to me and helped me with my business even more. So I'm gonna ask Nash, it's not that, he's, he's already admitted he can't juggle, so nobody laugh or you know them tomorrow, put them back in your bag, no one throw anything at him, you already admitted he can't juggle, okay? All right, so I'm gonna ask Nash in a few seconds to juggle. Nash, I've never ever asked anybody this before, but would you like to juggle my balls while I'm sitting here smiling? <laughs> yeah. You know I'm juggling my balls. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Thank you. I'm just going to sit back and smile if that's okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. I said, Nash, what I want you to do is to try, just try to juggle. And before you do, I want you guys to observe <clears throat> his juggling, his attempt to juggle. I want you ready, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You got one. You got one. <laughs> yeah. Right, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> That's okay, everyone give Nash a big hand. Alright, quick, give me a few seconds, quick attempts. Again, I've never asked two people in one day, you know. I've never asked this question two people in one day, but would you like to juggle my balls? Well, I just smile. So you're a bit keen, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So again, just quickly observe. Ooh, almost. I really give everyone a hand. See, what I learned when it comes to juggling is that the only way to keep the balls up is to keep your head up. Now, I'm going to demonstrate juggling again. Now, this time, as I juggle, just watch my eyes and watch if I'm looking at my hands. You ready? I feel a lot of pressure now, you know. Like, can you guys just tone down the pressure a bit? Like, I know everyone wants to get me caught out on camera here, yeah, but. So, watch my head and watch my eyes, okay? You notice that I look up the whole time and I don't look down to see where my hands are. What you find is that these balls are like an analogy for your life. You have ups, you have downs, you have ups, you have downs. No matter when the ball's up, no matter when the ball's down, you have to keep your head up. So not just in business, this is a like tip for life period. In mastering your psychology, the point is that when the good days happen, Head up. When a bad days happen, head up. Um, I've got time for one more example. Yeah, okay. yeah. So last one. I mean, I want to talk, quickly touch on idea generation and implementation. Uh, idea generation yeah, and implementation and execution. Sorry. Now, is it fair to say, by show of hands, 
Who thinks to have a business you need to have an idea, right? You need to have an idea to start a business, right? Okay, thank you. And who also thinks that sometimes you have ideas that are completely, who here has had just far-fetched ideas like raw, like that, like how do I even think, I was like high, like, who's ever had ideas like that? Thank you. Now, when I was younger, I don't know about you guys, I never had PS4 now when I was young, you know what I'm saying, we had something called a, a Nintendo. You know when you got the three different handles, you know, who, who thinks you play Nintendo, like, you know, you know when you got the three handles, you, can, you, know, you get to choose which one you want to hold, I'll be playing like this sometimes just to show up. Like, and I used to play a game, right, maybe, maybe you might know this game. It was of two Italian plumbers running around eating mushrooms, which made them grow in the process of trying to find a fire-breathing turtle while trying to catch a princess. Does that not sound like a crazy idea? Two Italian plumbers trying to find, eating mushrooms, getting bigger eating mushrooms like they're in Amsterdam, <laughs> trying to find a princess who got kidnapped by a fire-breathing, guys, turtles live in water, by the way, trying to find a fire-breathing turtle. Does that make sense? Yet, we all know the game is what? Thank you. That game had me addicted for hours just playing in front of it. So what that said to me, when I first realised that, you know what that said to me? There's no such thing as a bad idea. From when you have that, what actually is a bad idea? It's, it's not really. That's why I did the part, the most important thing is execution behind that idea. Because if I walked in and pitched about, yeah, um, yeah, it's, 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 two, it's two Italian plumbers, one's wears green, one's wears blue, and then they're gonna chase a turtle who lives on land and f breathes fire, and they'll, they'll tell me, like, I'm, I'm, I'm off my head. The point is, because Nintendo they executed it correctly, cool, you need to understand that, some, if you don't have an idea now, that's fine, but you might have an idea in future. The key is that you want to execute it effectively. Because nowadays, people, are they, are these are worthless. On pay, are these, everyone has, an, five year olds, they have ideas. Ideas don't mean anything without execution behind it. And when I say execution, what you want to do, you want to completely get into an, an industry and disrupt the hell out of it. Who's heard of Uber before? Uber's getting sued left, right and, country, left, right and centre in countries like France and the USA because normal taxi drivers, what people are used to, because people like, people like consistency, people like the status quo. So when you come there and just kick down an industry, yes, you make a lot of attention, yes, you make a lot of money, but you need to understand that people aren't going to like you for that. And that's fine, because I'm glad Uber came up and absolutely disrupted the industry. Who's heard of Alibaba before? Or Airbnb, Airbnb's more, who's heard of Airbnb? Again, people, hotel owners and B&B owners do not like Airbnb because it's taking business away from them. But why could they kick down and they disrupt the industry? So what you want to do, if you're at this random list, disrupt the industry, good. Because not everybody's going to like you. And as I close, I just want to play this piece. Is it speaking? Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. No problem, a cappella it is. So alongside speaking, I also do a bit of spoken word and a bit of poetry. And um, this one is called, Not Everybody's Going To Like You. Guess what? I mean, you know, like, you know, guess what? Like, you know, what? what? <laughs> take two, take two, take two. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Focus, okay, cool. Guess what? What? No matter what you do, not everybody's going to like you. I used to get quite stressed and find it difficult to digest that no matter what you do, not everybody's going to like you. And I'm just like you. We all like to be liked. In fact, certain people post certain pics on social media just to get likes. Then what I realised is that no matter what you do, not everybody's going to like you. See, you can be a hero to many and still be hated by some. Look, they crucified Jesus 
And they killed off MLK and JFK with a gun. Because no matter what you do, not everybody's going to like you. So let's take the one in five rule, for example. That means that out of five people, one is going to love you. They'll be your ride or die. They'll be with you by your side. The other one is just going to hate you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And the other three, they'll be neutral. I might not have an opinion. Because no matter what you do, not everybody's going to like you. So let's look at the UK population of roughly 60 million. That means that roughly 12 million people are just going to hate you, period. The other 36 million won't necessarily have an opinion and the final 12 million, they'll be the ones who love you. They'll be the ones who care about you. So just remember that no matter what you do, no matter what you do, not everybody is going to like you. Thank you. Is anybody going to get any questions that they'd like to ask him? There must be some. <laughs> yeah. uh, what does your business like centre around? So primarily, so I have an events management business. That's my main. Yeah. So in terms of it could be nightlife, it could be, for example, we had one for bonfire night. You know, it could be stag nights, hen nights, whatever. So events, events industry. How did you start your business? When I was finishing my role as vice president in 2014, class when I started in 2014, I realised that there's something, uh, it's like, almost like a mentalism. I just, I just admired him throughout my degree and I've always was kicking, you know, he's, he's a very successful millionaire, he has properties, he does a lot of things. So um, one thing he used to do was events. So I said to him, you know, how do you do it? What type of steps do you do? And I just simply asked him and it just did similar things to what he did, but kind of innovated it a bit different. So that's how it started, just for me, seeing someone in the field and just asking them how they did it and then just changing it and making it adapt to suit you. Nash, my boy Nash, you know. <laughs> Did you have a mentor at any point? Like, or would you come to him? To yeah, so he kind of last thing to Aaron, so he was kind of unofficially because he lives in Thailand, you see, so he wasn't, he used to live in the UK, but we just communicate on Skype and stuff. But um, you can kind of look at, him, look at him as a mentor for me. Now, currently, start, I currently got a new mentor in February for another project I'm working on, so I do have a mentor as well now. So, what are your dreams in life? What do you want to be? My, my dreams in life, I love that kid, my dreams in life. My dreams in life are probably, they're probably matured. I'll definitely say they have matured from when I was growing up in terms of the, you know when I gave you example of three things, do you want the money, do you want the time, do you want to get to help people? My first one was actually just money. You know, I didn't really, you know, I just wanted to have money. Didn't know exactly what, I just always wanted to have money. And that's more towards the helping others. You know, cause I understand now that the reason I changed from having money because I look at the examples of celebrities who have millions but are still unhappy. You know, when you look at when you look at the true root of happiness, it, you, you begin to when you hit stage and you realize it's, it's not money. Money is just a tool to help you to get there. Yes, having money is important because it allows you to have certain things to let you do other things. But as long as I feel like I'm giving value or satisfaction to people, then I'll be happy. And my other dream, my other goal is just my family as well. I'm very family orientated. So as long as I can help, as long as I'm in a situation whereby I become the oldest, oldest of four, you see. So as long as I'm in a situation whereby um, my siblings need me and I'm there for them, I'm happy. You know, yeah, I don't need to have money in the bank, but if I'm able to help them, I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm, my grandma, she's got dementia. I'm fortunate I'm not in a position to help as well as I can. But when I can help, I'll be even more happier. So that's probably my dreams. Thank you.